All right, all right. Well, hello again and welcome back to another episode of our podcast called Good News for Those Who Struggle. And if that's you, you are in the right place and you are certainly listening to uh, what's going to be an awesome episode. Uh, My name is Casey. I get to serve as one of the pastors of the Avenue Church and host of this particular podcast. And I am joined by none other than Miss Amanda Devlin. Can we give her a hand? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at the, the cr- a crowd favorite already. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure that, uh, that you're going to love her uh, if you don't know her by the end of this particular episode. But uh, Amanda, love for you to uh, introduce yourself and share a little about uh, who you are. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, guys. I am uh, Amanda. Uh, I don't deserve that introduction, but I'll take it. Um, so I am, um, I've been following uh, Jesus Christ for about six years. It'll be six years in March of this year, which is 2021. Uh, and um, I met Jesus at the end of a very long road of um, struggle. So I think I'm, I'm a pretty good fit for this podcast. Thank you for having me, Absolutely, Casey. absolutely. Um, so yeah, that is, oh, oh, I can share, um, just a little bit more about my background. I'm from South Carolina. Um, I grew up in, uh, foster care after the death of both of my, uh, parents and, um, yeah, drug abuse was a big part of my, um, story, alcoholism and, um, just, just a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm just so grateful to the Lord Christ that he saw fit to um, pull me up out of that and, mm-hmm. and set my feet on on the solid rock, and um, I uh, I can't um, I can't have imagined the life that I live today. So I'm excited. Wow, wow, and that's actually uh, our our main topic for today is uh, core healing, and uh, especially as we look at uh, core healing from trauma. And you mentioned the life that you live today. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a pretty beautiful life. Um, tell us a little bit about your hubby and um, how you ended up coming to the app. Yeah, so um, it's so funny. Without um, without both of our stories, my husband's and mine. His name is Daniel, by the way. He's a wonderful, Ooh. wonderful lover of Jesus. Mm-hmm. He loves Jesus more than he loves me, y'all, and I'm not jealous. Mm, that's and a good thing, that's right? That's why I fell in love with him. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, but he's from Colorado, um, and I'm from South Carolina, so I'm, I can say I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic because recovery brought us Mm. together in in a sense. Mm. So, um, and, uh, but yeah, he has been such a huge support to me in my healing journey Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I hope I'm a support to him, um, Mm. as well. Mm. And yeah, we love to, uh, worship the Lord together with music. Mm -hmm. He's a drummer, I'm a Mm -hmm. singer. Mm -hmm. What a team. Yeah. (laughs) What a team. And he serves as one of the pastors at Recovery Church, true? Yes, he does. He's doing amazing. Just gave an amazing message, I heard. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yep, I fell in love all over again. Awesome. (laughs) You could actually check that message out at uh, Recovery Church uh, Delray on their Facebook page and uh, be uh, inspired and empowered as well. And so, how did you end up at the app? Yes. So, um, after... Um, I aged out of the foster care system. I was kind of a floater. I was homeless many times. Mm-hmm. Um, I became dependent on men to take care of me mm-hmm. uh, after I aged out of the system. I had no community mm-hmm. um, and no idea how to take care of myself. So uh, that became my solution. Mm-hmm. And um, as far as the trauma went, it was all unresolved trauma. Mm-hmm. And uh, I medicated that with alcohol. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I dabbled with other drugs, but alcohol was what really had me mm-hmm. and had its hold on me. Mm-hmm. And um, so that really took me down a dark road. And uh, I found myself at the end of that nine years really trying to drink myself to death. Mm-hmm. I wanted the peace that I thought would come with death. Mm-hmm. And um, the night before I had my first encounter, with um, the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. I know now mm-hmm. that's his name, mm-hmm. um, I um, was in a blackout and um, I tried to commit suicide mm-hmm. and I was very nearly successful. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but the Lord God spared me mm-hmm. and uh, I woke up in a hospital room after a surgery that saved my life mm-hmm. and I felt his presence and it was the first time I cried in 10 years. Mm-hmm. 
just something touched me. I felt like I was receiving a loving hug, wow. you know, from this presence. And then um, from there, after that surgery, I went to jail mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I had also uh, battered the person that I was living with mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And oh man, I'm so not proud of these things, mm -hmm. but they're they're part of my story. Yeah. And God uses all of this yep. to minister to others, so I'm happy to share it. Absolutely. Um, so I went to jail, and uh, while I was in jail, um, I was put in a cell that had to be cleaned because of my, um, my wounds. Mm -hmm. It had to be very thoroughly cleaned. Mm -hmm. And so I say that because um, there shouldn't have been anything left in my cell. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I found this uh, scrap of paper. It was like a ripped up piece of envelope with a psalm written on it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't titled, but it was uh, Psalm 51. I later found it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that same presence filled my cell and wrapped itself around me, mm -hmm. and I found myself weeping and asking for a second chance. Wow. I didn't ask for Jesus to come into my heart yet. I didn't yeah. know what that meant, but yeah. um, I read the words, um, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. and let the bones that you have broken rejoice mm -hmm. and create in me a clean heart, O God. Mm -hmm. You know, and so these words just began to jump out at me from this page, and I was weeping, and there was snot, mm. and, um, you know, so I said I said that, and later that night, uh, another uh, cell, not a cellmate, it was um, someone in a cell nearby was having a Bible study, mm. and she walked me uh, through the gospel, and I gave my life to Christ. Wow. wow. And I, um, I haven't had a drink ever since that. Praise God. Um, the Lord led me to be honest about mm. what, you know, what was the case? Mm -hmm. I could have claimed that the person I was living with attacked me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was I was very scared. I was facing felony charges. Mm -hmm. um, but the Lord had led me to say to say the truth wow. that I had no memory yeah. of what happened, right. and so it could have been all me. Wow. And um, when they found out that I had you know, I was a blackout drunk that I drank every day, right. my punishment was treatment, mm. and it was a treatment that was two blocks away from the Avenue Church mm. treatment center. And so um, I couldn't leave on the weekends until I finished that program. But as soon as I did, I, I found the Avenue Church mm -hmm. and um, I showed up there and it was, I was home. Mm -hmm. That's the, the first sermon I heard was all about the orphan and, mm -hmm. and the Avenue Church's heart for the orphan. Mm -hmm. And there I was and every person I had ever encountered in my lifetime up until that point had such indifference mm -hmm. to my suffering mm -hmm. as an orphan who grew mm -hmm. up in, in the system who had mm -hmm. experienced it. Mm -hmm. and um, the devastating effects of just not having a family of mm -hmm. origin. Um, so I, um, I I began to quickly flourish at the mm. Avenue Church, and it hasn't stopped. Wow. So I'm, I'm really grateful for our church family. Wow. And we're grateful that uh, you are you are a beloved member of the Avenue Church family. What a story. I mean, I feel like we could be like, well, that's our show for today. You can keep putting that on rewind and, and listening to that over and over again. I mean... <laughs> Uh, I just want to just take a moment, just like, wow, that is such a but the Lord story. Oh, yeah. And uh, just his intervening grace that uh, it really is true that Jesus changes everything. So true. And mm -hmm. I am, I'm sitting here with more evidence uh, to that with Amanda. And so thank you for allowing us into that sacred space and sharing uh, some of those uh, really difficult uh, uh, parts of your story uh, that, that God uses uh, to make uh, your story so beautiful. Thank you for that. It's a joy. Thank you. So speaking of your story, it actually leads us um, to where we are today mm -hmm. uh, because uh, Amanda um, co-leads a uh, group study on Wednesday nights uh, at our church called Core Healing. And um, really part of your experience was uh, you had experienced the forgiveness of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But we're, you were still in need of the freedom that Jesus brings. And, and it seems as though core healing is a, is a tool that God has used to help you to experience that. So tell us a little bit about what's going on in core healing mm -hmm. and why is there such a hunger for that? Because that was one of the studies that really kind of filled up quickly uh, when we offered it. So what's going on and why such a hunger? Yeah, yeah, and I, I was telling you a little bit before the show that I wasn't surprised that it filled mm -hmm. up so quickly mm -hmm. because as I've been in fellowship, in discipleship with women at our church, uh, probably two in four of the women that I encounter 
that come into the Avenue Church and that recovery church have experienced some form of trauma. Mm -hmm. And um, what I've learned about trauma in my own counseling, I've been seeing a professional counselor for about five years, mm -hmm. and she's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really didn't think I needed counseling mm -hmm. before I was referred by the Avenue Church to a counselor after my membership interview. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm so grateful for God's providence and mm. his, his leading, yeah. uh, putting that on the, on the elders' hearts yeah. to recommend that because um, it changed everything. Mm. And uh, so one of the things that I've learned about trauma, as I was saying, is that it, it is neuroscience has proven that it is not only an event that happens mm. and then that you can easily move on from, mm. but it's actually stored in the brain and in the body mm. so that even the slightest thing can trigger someone into a state of what's called an amygdala hijacking, mm -hmm. um, which can cause a number of events to happen chemically in the mm -hmm. brain that can take over that person's, it can, it can last for hours, days, weeks, mm -hmm. it can be ongoing, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the complexity of the trauma. And uh, so it's something I've become very passionate about because um, as someone who sponsors women in AA, there are women who have experienced chronic relapse mm. as a result of you know getting to their fourth step and unpacking all of this stuff mm. and having trauma. Wow! And it, it can a lot of times it can take people out. Yeah. Into active addiction again yeah. because yeah. they don't know what to do with those those right. that rush of, of right. hormones that are happening right. with them. And so um, I have been able to be blessed to see this change that. Mm. And it, it's just, it's life or death in recovery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it can, it can be debilitating for someone without an addiction as well. Yeah. And cause you to not be able to maintain a job. Right. Or relationships. Right. And so Jesus said that I came that they may have life and have it to the full. Mm -hmm. And so I'm passionate about mm. bringing this to people because it's enabled me to have that. And mm -hmm. I've watched others mm -hmm. also reach that. I think um, as someone who you know, uh, pastors this church and uh, I'm hosting this podcast. I don't have a story in, in addiction um, as, as you're sharing, mm -hmm. um, but w something that you said really, really resonated with me. It's life or death mm -hmm. for the, and you said for those in addiction. And then I would say uh, for me, uh, it's life or slow death. Mm -hmm. So it's still death. Like I still know the taste of death. It's just a bit slower. Yeah. And, um, and it doesn't make it better. It, it, you're still dying. And, and really what Jesus came to do was give us life to the full. Yes. And what you've experienced um, from what you're telling me is that uh, there's a beginning to that. But then there's, there's so much more than, than when, when a person comes to faith in Christ. Then they, that's like the beginning of the journey, Absolutely. right? Yes. And, and, for, and for you, um, talk a little bit about... Um, this the, the materials of core healing like why is it um so you, you gave us an, an explanation of like the the trauma that can then stay stored mm -hmm. and and wreak havoc forever if yes. you don't address it so tell us a little bit about some of the tools maybe that somebody would experience as they walk through um and we both have in front of us the workbook mm -hmm. um uh, by marty wibbles yes. um, so we, we we love marty and we're, we're thankful for her work Talk to us a little bit about the actual materials and tools that, that somebody might experience in core healing. Right, so um, core healing, it, it goes through, uh, it gives you a lot of knowledge and understanding, which mm -hmm. I'm a big knowledge person. Mm -hmm. I, I understand, if I understand what's happening inside of me, mm -hmm. it might not help, I might not be able to fix myself, mm -hmm. but just understanding what's happening helps me to give myself grace. So good. And that's so powerful. Yeah. I accept the grace of God. Right. And, and um, that's huge for me, at right. least. Right. Um, so, but core healing covers, um, uh, Marty has identified five specific areas of the core of a person's being okay. that she ministers to um, throughout the workbook. Okay. Um, and, uh, but first uh, would be the stabilization phase. So um, I, I'd like to debunk a myth okay. that is Come on. pretty prevalent, I think, when people think about healing from trauma. Okay. And, and that would be that you have to relive it mm. and feel all of those things all over again. And that's actually the exact opposite. Wow. 
of what the process looks like, at least with core healing. Okay. Now there are seven, more than 700 therapeutic methods. Okay. And so not all therapy is alike. Okay. So if anyone is considering seeking professional help for trauma recovery, mm -hmm. um, I would highly suggest that they find someone who specializes in trauma. Okay. Um, and who specializes um, specifically with cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay. Um, those those two right there, if mm -hmm. your counselor can take those boxes, they're okay. there to go. You're in good hands. Yes. Okay. Um, so because they're not going to cause you to relive any trauma, actually, it helps you to stop reliving trauma. Okay. And how to recognize the effects of trauma and how it has affected you. Wow. Um, so things like cognitive distortions mm -hmm. um, and different fragmented memories that you might have. Mm -hmm. um, and there are other therapeutic uh, techniques that are helpful, such as EMDR. Mm -hmm. But I think that those would be best kept for the later stages okay. because it does um, require you to kind of go back and sit with a painful memory okay. in order to do it. Okay. So, um, but yeah, core healing walks through, it walks you through some grounding exercises in the stabilization mm -hmm. phase. That's, that's pretty much what comes first. Okay. Um, so that you can learn what to do when you are feeling um, the amygdala hijacking. Yeah. So we've all heard of fight or flight, right? Right, right. So that is the rush of hormones that your amygdala tells your hypothalamus to release mm -hmm. when you experience a, um, when you, uh, whatever learned danger sure, you have. And sure. trauma, because it's the result of sin mm -hmm. um, and something that shouldn't be, mm -hmm. God gave us this fight or flight response mm -hmm. to keep us safe mm -hmm. from natural dangers. Mm -hmm. You know, if we need to run from a mountain lion. Right. Uh, or something, you know, but it's, it's so it, it applies to this because we've been caused harm by something that we shouldn't have been caused harm mm -hmm. by. And so because the, um, the actual trauma itself is wrong, the response gets distorted wow. and it gets tainted. Um, so this can disrupt someone's entire sure. life. Sure. Yeah, so you can um, learn to recognize your specific triggers. Uh -huh. um, it, this book will help you to learn how to identify those okay. and give you tools to know what to do with them. And we're actually going to come back once we kind of like, I think, review uh, the, the, the overall uh, perspective of core healing and talk about one of those specifically as it pertains to anxiety. Amanda yes. texted me after the um, message Sunday. We talked about anxiety. We're in a mental health series. Um, and uh, we talked about anxiety and she highlighted something that I think was really helpful specifically so we're gonna we're gonna come back to that um, but but big picture first mm -hmm. phase is stabilization and just kind of getting some solid ground underneath you stage one okay where do we go from there so moving on from there that's where the five areas of the core of your being are okay. addressed and um, so Marty kind of weaves the, the all of the tools that are presented in the stabilization phase okay. into all of the chapters and helps you to oh, hone in on these specific areas. Um, I believe they are safety, competence, identity, purpose, and belonging. Mm. And um, and so those are the five core areas okay. um, that Marty identified. Uh, I believe a colleague of hers asked her, Marty, what are you doing with your clients that they're actually healing? What is, mm. what is working? And that's where she stopped and said, well, what am, what am I doing? Wow. What are we addressing that's actually helping people to recover from trauma? And so, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's an amazing work. And I'm, I'm so grateful to Marty uh, for her work and uh, to God for pouring it out through her. Mm. It's incredible. So this work that, uh, that we have here, again, it's called Core Healing from Trauma by Marty Wibbles, um, MS, and then M L M H C. Uh, it wasn't written as a book to then be used. It was actually almost like from her findings of like what the Lord was doing and how he was bringing about healing. Is that fair? Well, I would say that her response, um, how, how it began to form in her mind mm -hmm. was as a response okay. to a colleague asking her, what are you doing? Gotcha, gotcha. And, and how can we harness it? I love that. You know, and so, but she did write the workbook with a person in mind who might not be able to afford to see a counselor. Okay. Or might not be able, or might not be comfortable seeing yeah. a counselor. Yeah, okay. You know, uh, there can be such a stigma with seeking mental care. Right. Um, so, so yeah. But I love the fact that like just the the catalyst for it was something's working, people are experiencing healing, let's capture that and be able to put it into a tool that can get in people's hands. Yes. 
that's awesome. So I'm just gonna, um, you know, read you some of the chapters, um, and then Amanda, if you could kind of, um, you know, there, there's there's a, there's you know, more than ten here, so we won't talk about each of them. But maybe if you want to highlight one or two of them that you think would be helpful for our listeners mm -hmm. to to get their minds around, like what is God doing in the midst of this core healing, and so. Mm -hmm. It starts off with chapter one, living after trauma. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, don't believe everything you think. Mm -hmm. Three, finding safety. Four, I am a victor. Five, when FUD erodes competence. Six, forgive and forget time for a substitution. Seven, forgive and go forward. Eight, who am I? Nine, discovering purpose. 10, design to belong. 11, post-traumatic growth, a heart at peace. 12, a mind at rest. I think even just the reading of those contents is, is captivating, especially to those who are struggling and thirsty for, for some of this freedom that we talked about. So I just read the contents. What, are, what, are you, what do you connect to? Or what do you think the, it would be good for the listeners to kind of process as, as I went through the overview of the material? So if the listener is considering core healing as something they might want to do, mm -hmm. I, I think it would be probably best to stay in the first, at least the first uh, two chapters, because that's where the stabilization is. Mm -hmm. If you journey too far on, there might be some exercises that you see if mm -hmm. you haven't um, mm -hmm. already got the grounding techniques in mm -hmm. mind and things like that, and, and learning how to recognize your own triggers and, mm -hmm. and when you might be triggered. Uh, they might be a little bit too much. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so um, that's not to make the book seem scary. Right. I hope it doesn't right. because absolutely every time I open this book, even the times where I was scared to open it, mm -hmm. um, just because of my own FUD, which is uh, fear, uncertainty, doubt is what that stands okay. for. Okay, okay. I was wondering. Um, one of the chapters, when the FUD erodes competence. So um, because of my own FUD, mm -hmm. I would be afraid to open the workbook, okay. psyching myself out. But every time I've opened this book, I have walked away from it feeling at peace. Wow. And feeling like I have just had something inside of me worked on and healed wow. by the Father. Yeah. So another thing I'd like to highlight about the workbook is that it is um, a Christian-based workbook. Mm -hmm. um, and Marty um, has counseled people who are not Christian. And I want to encourage anybody who's not a Christian who might mm -hmm. be listening to this podcast mm -hmm. um, not to cancel it out of your mind just yet. Mm -hmm. um, it is something that you can look at. You can look at the Bible as literature mm -hmm. if you're not comfortable looking at it as uh, a divine word mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. Some people have spiritual, religious trauma, and that's difficult for them. Mm -hmm. So, um, But the workbook has a wealth of, mm -hmm. of uh, just ready um, knowledge for you to learn how to heal. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I appreciate appreciate you sharing that and just the invitation that um, you know God's God's goodness and grace uh, is incredibly invitational mm -hmm. to anyone and everyone who's ready uh, for something different. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I you know, I just would affirm that. Um, so we, you're talking about. In your story, and in this particular episode, we're talking about um, trauma that has had a lasting effect mm -hmm. and is, um, in many ways, potentially like um, controlling your life. Mm -hmm. And you're fighting, you're maybe fighting against that, but there, there's some control in your life. And, and so could you just, because I want to talk a little bit about as it deals specifically with anxiety, mm -hmm. um, but could you elaborate just a little bit from your own experience, Amanda, on um, what life was like being led by trauma mm -hmm. and what life has been like being led more by Jesus and the freedom that he offers. Yes. Um, so I could start just by saying I experienced uh, life before trauma or before Christ mm -hmm. and, and this recovery. Um, I was not living a life at all. Mm. I was uh, very numb, mm -hmm. out of touch with my emotions, and that's very common for trauma survivors, mm -hmm. to be out of touch with your emotions. It doesn't mean that you have an absence of emotion when something happens that makes you angry, you mm -hmm. get angry, mm -hmm. or when something happens that's sad, you might get sad, um, but you might go throughout the day, the entire day, feeling apathetic to mm -hmm. most things, and so that's not a full life at all. Mm. 
still did. And uh, so I remember when I started drinking, uh, I was a teenager, and I remember feeling good mm -hmm. for the first time. Mm -hmm. I was already so traumatized at the age of 13 mm -hmm. that I was completely numb. Mm -hmm. And to feel good was good. Mm -hmm. And so I latched on to that. Right. It wasn't that I was in so much suffering mm -hmm. that I turned to that. Mm -hmm. It was that I was so numb that I just mm -hmm. I liked it because it made me feel good. Wow. You know, um, and it took some years before it became a dependence. Yeah. And once it did, I had extreme anxiety if I didn't, if, if that was threatened. Okay. And I, it didn't look at, like I would be able to afford to have my solution. Okay. You know. So. Okay. And now I, I'm, I would imagine that there's going to be listeners out there who, um, because your story has a couple of chapters to it, right? Like you have the, the post Christ chapter, mm -hmm. and then you have the meeting Christ chapter where the drinking stops, but the freedom's not fully experienced yet because core healing comes in and 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 be begins to really take you on more of that journey of, of being free. So again, the difference between being I'm forgiven of sin, but I'm I'm not living free like I want like I want to. Yeah. Tell us a little bit maybe about just like um, what the difference is as a Christian mm -hmm. to to be saved and forgiven, um, that chapter compared to what it's been like now for you to experience more of this core healing. Okay, so um, yeah, after becoming a believer, there was a very long period, I think it was close to two years where uh, I felt extreme levels of joy. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of was a numbing agent of its own. Interesting. Uh, I think in recovery, we call it a pink cloud. Okay. Um, but for the first time in life, I had this this community. Mm -hmm. I had this sense of purpose mm -hmm. and meaning to life, and even a um, an explanation for what had gone so horribly mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you know that was so beautiful. Right. But uh, I remember distinctly when I when I started seeing Marty, and um, we started going through this work. Mm -hmm. um, she first told me that. Um, you know, she asked me if I was experiencing full range of emotions. And I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she told me that um, a lot of trauma survivors don't, that, that she calls it a numb survivor. Okay. And so it's very common. And, um, but I was experiencing um, other addictive behaviors that I would turn to when I was um, feeling anxious. Okay. And, uh, it, it became a really um, horrible dependence on sugar. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that was really, really painful for me. It lasted for about three years. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm so grateful to the Lord for the healing that I've received for that. Mm -hmm. um, because there's such a shame when we turn as Christians, I, at least for me, it was, it was such a shame for me to be driven to this thing right. instead of running to Jesus. Yeah. Because yeah. I felt like I should be. Right. running to Jesus right. and not this. Yeah. But when I didn't turn to the sugar, mm -hmm. which was my thing at the mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. um, I would get crippled with this just continuing anxiety that would not mm. lift. Wow. And um, I didn't understand it. And I prayed. I tried to pray it away. Mm -hmm. I had Christian friends who were very well-meaning and loving. Um, quote Matthew eleven twenty-eight to 30 to me. Uh, or Philippians 4, 6 to 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Mm -hmm. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe and I trust the scriptures. Sure. But there's something um, called comorbidity okay. with uh, trauma, okay. survivors specifically. There's just a special kind of anxiety that can come with uh, mm -hmm. trauma. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. um, it has uh, its backing in neuroscience, right. and so I'm, I was so relieved to learn that I wasn't just this totally faithless wow. husk walking around right. made of sugar. Right, right. You know, it was such a relief to me that I yeah. was like, oh, I'm not broken beyond repair. Yeah. There is hope and mm. healing from this. Wow. You know, and so um, that that is something that uh, I'm so grateful for. And then now today, after walking through the necessary healing, it did require mm -hmm. counseling for mm -hmm. me, professional mm -hmm. help, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not ashamed to say that. Right. I, I'm, I seem pretty sane, I think, to mm -hmm. most people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, I'm not insane, but I've suffered uh, traumas right. that, most, that nobody should have to bear. Right. 
Um, so I, I can receive the grace of God and step into the healing he has for me. Mm. And we know that the scriptures are clear that many counselors mm. uh, are, are what is uh, prescribed and, uh, and uh, called for, uh, for God's people. And the fact that uh, you have uh, submitted yourself to many counselors, beginning even with the Avenue Church and the counsel that you received from you know the elders at the beginning to go, and then Mari, and um, I, I know that you uh, su submit yourself to counsel uh, outside of even that. You know, I mean, you're, you, you have a humble spirit that's willing to learn, and, and obviously you are the product of that. Mm -hmm. And interesting, really interesting, there's a lot to process, and I, I feel like our listeners are this is probably going to be an episode that you're going to want to listen to more than once and like hit that uh, little uh, circle 30 button that takes you back 30 seconds and re-listen to different parts. Um, but one of the things that you said was that, of course, you believe in the scriptures and that is true. Mm -hmm. um, but, but sometimes there's like work to be done beyond just memorizing scripture and praying hard. Like... Like the Holy Spirit um, needs to get in in um, you know some particular contexts and do some some work where we open ourselves up to that and mm -hmm. it it seems like that was that was your story is that you you had well intended people around you kind of cheering you on but you need more than a cheerleader you needed a counselor yeah. to help you open up to what the Spirit wanted to show you and then and then heal you from yeah. fair percent yes. Okay, so if you're hearing this, hear it mm -hmm. and see where the Spirit might be leading you in, um, in your own personal journey. So I, I said that we were going to come back to this, um, this spot where we talked a bit more specifically about anxiety. And I want to read to you uh, from page 53 here. Uh, first, the description of how you might be able to recognize um, this, uh, as Amanda talked about, um, sort of this over-active um, fight-or-flight mechanism. So let's talk a little bit about first recognizing it, and then we'll skip to the paragraph that talks about like a potential answer. And this is under the stabilization um, phase, correct? Yes. All right, so let me re read this to you. Um, how can you recognize uh, when your SNS, can you tell us what, what is SNS? Sympathetic dominance. Okay, is overactive. When overstimulated by past learning directed by traumatic stress, your SNS is in sympathy with the stress, repeatedly placing you on high alert when you don't need to be. It can cause you to feel a sense of out of control danger or fear. You might feel angry since the SNS is the hot system of the ANS. Uh, do you know what, That's the autonomic nervous system, and I, I misspoke before. It's actually SNS is sympathetic nervous system. Okay. Which is your fight or flight. Okay, uh, got it. Response. Fight or flight. Yes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. A number of physiological changes can rapidly occur, such as accelerated heart rate, constricted blood vessels, increased blood pressure, muscle tension, release of stress hormones, or inhibition of insulin production. You could feel stressed or have a sense of inexplicable rage, sadness, anxiety, or fear. You might even have a panic attack. With repeated sympathetic dominance, some people develop digestive challenges. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just stop there for a minute. Uh, I, I, think, I think we may have connected with some listeners who maybe they're getting the help they need, maybe not, maybe they're self-medicating, whatever the case may be, but we may have just read somebody's story right in that. So... Um, can you put into kind of like Amanda's words what we just read? Just kind of reword that, like, hey, what's what's happening here in this paragraph? Yeah. So uh, God gave us the autonomic nervous system mm -hmm. to, in order to avoid danger. Once mm -hmm. we've experienced something, our brain remembers and mm -hmm. our body remembers. Okay. So it gets stored not only in your brain but in your body, mm -hmm. so that you you react to a stimulus mm -hmm. in less than a twelfth of a second. Mm -hmm. You can go from being where you are. Yeah to being in fight or flight. Yeah. And there are a few other F indicators listed in the core healing work. Okay. Uh, feed is one of them, which, mm -hmm. you know, to me, I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Turning mm -hmm. to food is one of them? Right, right. You know, fornicate is another one of them. Mm -hmm. Turning to sexually acting out mm -hmm. um, or pornography mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, and uh, freeze, mm -hmm. fight, flight, freeze, fornicate, feed. Yes, okay. I covered them all. Okay. Um, so, and freezing might just mean 
shutting down your emotions. Mm -hmm. I used to do that. I, mm -hmm. I remember I in my mind's eye, I thought of a light switch when I thought of my uh, mm -hmm. feeling self. And I knew that I could turn off my feelings mm -hmm. for a person I cared about if they hurt me mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it sounds very Vampire Diaries-ish, mm -hmm. you know. Turn your humanity right, back right, on. Right, right, right. You know. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so uh, this, uh, to just paraphrase this in my own terms, um, the SNS um, can can hijack you by your amygdala. Um, well, your amygdala would hijack mm -hmm. you. It's a part of your SNS. And this could take you into a place of feeling constantly anxious or fearful or sad or um, have panic or rage. Mm. And uh, this it, going uninterrupted could last for hours mm -hmm. or it could last for days mm -hmm. or weeks mm -hmm. or months. Mm. So uh, I think it's super valuable to people because one of the, what's the first thing that um, I, I want to ask you, the listener, what's the first thing you think of when you're having anxiety or depression? Do you think of going to a psychiatrist and getting put on some kind of medication? Mm -hmm. That would be something you would be dependent upon mm -hmm. to keep you at a normal place. Mm -hmm. You're the only normal that it could possibly bring you, whatever that normal would be. Mm -hmm. Would it really be your normal? Mm -hmm. And for some people, I'm not saying that I don't believe in medication. There are some uh, chemical imbalances that need to be treated with medication. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's not something to mess around with. You need to see a professional counselor if you're ex experiencing these um, types of things at a, um, at a heightened level that's mm. uh, at a debilitating mm -hmm. level um, uh, uh, to some measure. So, um, but what if, if you're a, su a survivor of trauma, consider mm -hmm. that you might be experiencing what's called sympathetic dominance mm. that is um, causing this and that has a solution. Mm. And we're going to talk about a solution here in just a second. Yeah, and, and what, I, what I am sensing is this is solution-oriented material. Marty's got a solution-oriented vision of like, let's move toward healing and, and, not, and not dwell. But just um, as you're reading this and as I'm reading it, I'm hearing it and you sent this to me, I was like, wow, <laughs> that's very real to my experience personally. Mm -hmm is being completely in the moment one one moment and then having a thought or seeing someone or whatever the case may be being triggered mm -hmm. and then wow i am really working uphill mm -hmm. to come back to like normal to come back to like what you said humanity yeah. being able to feel being able to be fully present again it's almost like you're you're in the deep end of the water and you're swimming really hard and you you remember where the surface is but you're just not sure when or, or even if you're going to get there. You know it passes, but it's like, you know, Jesus talks about being a good master mm. and having a good heart about where and how he wants to lead you. Mm. But there's other masters. And, and I think we're, we're looking at one that, that, that don't have the same heart that he does and, and will lead you to a different place. And the question is really, you know, who do you want to be led by? Right. So let's, let's turn to uh, some of the answers, if we will, of what it means to connect more with Jesus, our good pastor, whose, whose yoke uh, he invites us to take on. So the answer um, over here, and this is not simplistic, it's just the beginning, though, of, of this um, journey. The answer, again, um, Marty Wibbles, when you realize you're functioning in the brain's hot system, you can rapidly move out of that state into the brain's cool system the parasympathetic nervous system. With parasympathetic dominance, you actually give yourself time to make healthy choices. You train yourself to think rationally as you inhale and exhale deeply, allowing your body to decrease its heart rate while maintaining normal body temperature and healthy blood pressure. Reclaiming PNS dominance can help your gastrointestinal system work properly it's interesting to note that physicians often refer to the GI tract as the emotional brain. So many neurons are in the GI tract that a stress response anywhere in your body could cause changes in digestion, etc. The relaxation response you're learning can help you begin to manage that. But if you have serious GI or other medical concerns, please be sure to see your physician for a medical for a thorough medical um, exam. Um, so 
Talk to us a little bit about the answer, some of the solution, getting moving forward. Go. So that is just uh, a, a very, it's, um, there's way more of the solution mm -hmm. in, sure. uh, in this chapter specifically. Okay, okay. Um, Do you want so, to take us to one of those places or just well, talk about it? Uh, for the sake of time, I'll condense it yeah, because go there's for so it. much. This mm -hmm, is a rich mm -hmm, text. Mm -hmm. So, um, but grounding exercises, which is one of the first things that you learn mm. uh, when you begin going through the core healing workbook, okay. um, so that you don't have to relive trauma okay. when you're going through it. Uh, grounding exercises um, are they're diverse. Mm -hmm. So the one that she mentions in this part um, of the solution that mm -hmm. we read, mm -hmm. that you just read. Mm -hmm. um, is is the the breathing one, which okay. is a physical form of grounding. Okay. Um, but there are others that I, I I gravitate towards counting backwards by a weird number, okay. like by sevens or okay. by threes, okay. from a hundred. Um, and that what that does is it it takes you out of the fight or flight response. So your your the fight or flight response isn't just something that you're choosing. It is literally a rush of the mm. of hormones mm. that is going through your brain, firing through your body. All of your body systems are firing so that you can get out of danger. Mm -hmm. So um, what you what grounding exercises do is take you out of that place and bring you back into the front uh, logic thinking mm -hmm. center of your brain. Mm -hmm. So um, so that you can ground into the present. And um, there are soothing grounding. Scripture can be a part of soothing grounding. Mm -hmm. um, going for a walk can be a part of uh, physical grounding, mm -hmm. mental grounding, such as counting mm -hmm. uh, or noticing colors or shapes in the room. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, any any of your five senses, you could smell some um, uh, essential oils. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that might be one of the reasons why they actually are effective okay. for helping calm people. Okay. Um, I don't buy into the whole uh, spirituality of sure. that whole. Sure. Sure. Thing, but right. um, but I like essential oils. Mm -hmm, I happen mm -hmm. to like the lemongrass very much. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, and anything that activates your five senses can help you ground into the present moment. Mm. And as you, but it takes intentionality. Um, most of most, I know for myself. I'll speak for myself. Mm -hmm. um, I can just go along and things be happening inside of me that are directing my my thinking and directing my behavior and not take notice mm -hmm. and just go along and, and I might have an okay day right but at the end of the day have I had God's best day for me for right. that day right and so um so I have to notice when I'm breathing shallow into my mm. chest and feeling anxious and I have to stop and pause and check in and say how am I feeling and how is what I'm feeling directing my life mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. sometimes several times a day right just to tune in and and and, and learn yeah um how my brain's working right um, because the, the, the ultimate goal with this specific um, SNS dominance and solving that would be to retrain your brain how to establish the PNS dominance. Mm. And you can't establish it. Mm. Um, you know, neuroplasticity shows that the brain can change. Mm -hmm. and, um, so what does that mean? Does that mean that you can learn a new response? Yes, yeah, so um, the uh, automatic thoughts that we have throughout the day, yeah. the more you think a thought, it, it, the, the more quickly you think a thought. Sure, okay. Because it forms a groove. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When that neuron fires through your brain, it right. forms a groove. Right. It's like, you know, if you're walking through the grass, sure. back and forth. But if you start to choose a new path, right. that grass will grow in, right. and a new path will form okay. where you're walking. Yeah. And so you can replace negative thoughts that you're telling yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you can... Uh, learn to stop and pause and tell yourself that you're here, you're safe, mm. that Jesus has you. Mm -hmm. um, and and this takes constant practice. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's a lifelong commitment, truly, right. Right. For, your mental, for your own mental health. Because it took you a lifetime to get where you are in grooving right. those paths. Yes. So so it's, it's I don't know that it has to be the same amount of time, right? Because we know that, that the scriptures tell us that like God can restore what the locusts have stolen and it, it doesn't necessarily it's not necessarily apples to apples when it's you working against you and or or your brokenness and then God working for you yeah. but it's not going to be overnight right and you know I thought that once I went through this workbook mm -hmm. I quit counseling I was like I went through the book I'm healed right I'm cured of all my trauma right I don't need to focus on yeah. this anymore and yeah I quickly digress I quickly wow. revert back to um, just the, the automatic system mm -hmm. that, you know, and um, now that I've returned to it and I'm, I'm focusing on it and I'm taking other ones mm -hmm. through the book, 
Um, it's just, it's solidifying more and more, and I'm noticing more and more of what's happening mm -hmm. and how to work on it. Mm -hmm. New tools mm -hmm. and new awareness. Yeah. And that every time I go through this book, there's new awareness yeah. and I gain more tools. So good. And life gets better. So good. Tell us, what are you supposed to do mm. once, once you come back to being present or have a sense of grounding? Okay, so you've counted back by sevens or you've done the breathing, the inhale, the exhale, the, you know, the, you, you've done, you've practiced the grounding yep. and you're in a different space in your brain. Mm -hmm. Now what? Because I feel like there's going to be a, just from experience, there's going to be a lot that once you get there, mm -hmm. that then is telling you to run back to where, to what you know. Well, I can see how you might think that. So, but it, it really is, um, I, I would say the, the one thing that you would really need to do is um, try to figure out what was the trigger okay. and write it down. Okay. Um, that helps me just mm -hmm. to kind of be, become more and more aware of the various triggers. Okay. And if there's nothing that you can identify, you can just pray okay. to the Lord. Okay. Um, if, if it was a memory that's mm -hmm. particularly problematic, mm -hmm. A, a licensed, um, trained counselor uh, mm -hmm. in trauma recovery can mm -hmm. help you walk through different exercises. Okay. Um, EMDR is one of them mm -hmm. for intrusive memories and mm -hmm. dreams. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I recently did a memory healing exercise with Marty mm -hmm. uh, from a, um, I, I had probably one of the strongest triggers I've had in some years mm -hmm. now, um, not too long ago. And um, uh, it was just exposure to some sin in the world that was very familiar mm -hmm. and it was very um, in my face mm -hmm. and um, yeah so I actually did the grounding mm -hmm. and I called um, I called some people to mm -hmm. talk about it mm -hmm. afterwards I knew what the trigger was mm -hmm. and I was having a hard time not running back and, and, re yeah. and hitting replay right right the number one thing I would encourage anybody to do after grounding is yes. to stop hitting replay of the yeah. trigger you know mm -hmm. the, the whole football instant replay you yeah think? We do that in our minds sometimes. Yes. When someone makes us mad, yes. and in between the making mm -hmm. up time, I mm -hmm. do this with my husband all the time, mm -hmm. I love you, mm -hmm. honey, but mm -hmm. when he makes me mad, sometimes yeah. instead of going to him for peace, I will just hit instant replay yeah. on his offense, right. because I deserve to be mad. Yeah, it feels good for a little bit, right? Yeah, it mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Lord. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it does no good, absolutely yeah. no good. It just stirs you up more and more. And, um, yeah, especially with traumatic memories and, and such, you, you want to stop hitting that replay button. So then uh, you're triggered, mm -hmm. we ground, mm -hmm. we get present, yeah. um, and, and maybe that's a time to, uh, in that present state of mind, remind ourselves of the truth of Scripture. You mentioned that you called somebody, so yes. reaching out for help. Um, and then there's going to be, uh, I, again, this is me kind of processing out loud, uh, there's going to be a moment where you either need to decide to hit the replay button mm -hmm. in an unhealthy manner or like actually move on with your day, right? Like step into the present and, and do your very best to be the most present, mm -hmm. you know, version of yourself that you can be and, and kind of keep going, even if you have to repeat the grounding exercise. Is that fair? Absolutely. Okay. There's, um, I think uh, Marty said, sometimes you might have to do grounding exercises over a hundred times a day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You never know. But once right. you get yourself grounded into the present, you right. are able to move on. Right. You have a choice yeah. in, your, choice. In, in what you think about. And, and, right. and the scripture says, take every thought captive and make it obedient yeah. to Christ. Come so, on. Uh, you know, you have, the, you have an actual choice to do that. Whereas without grounding exercises or the other tools right. in, uh, that I've learned in core healing, I didn't have a choice. Right. Right. It was just my trauma was running things right, right. up there, yeah. and it was wreaking havoc mm -hmm. on relationships mm -hmm. and um, including with my relationship with God. Right, absolutely. I feel like it brings you back to present, mm -hmm. which is um, I mean Jesus is always with us, but when we get present with Jesus and become uh, reacquainted with the power of the Holy Spirit in the present moment, mm -hmm. it's like um, we we now have that power. Uh, to continue to move forward, we're now being controlled by something else besides the havoc that yes. we were just in, Marty. So, um, I think that's um, I think that's really uh, really helpful as as we kind of think through um, what it means to um, work through uh, some of these core healing things. And again, this is 
this is just stage one, right? Like, like there's so much more behind this, but this is really helpful, I think, to our listeners, myself included, mm -hmm. as it pertains to like managing our day and then becoming sort of the best, most present version of ourselves, being sensitive to spirit, mm -hmm. being uh, able to be filled with joy, filled with emotion, sad, whatever the case may be, but like the full version of the human that God has called us and created us to be. Yeah. This seems to be incredibly helpful. Um, kind of a final note, and just curious how you, how you might think about this, but um, listening to Dane Oldman's book, um, Gentle and Lowly, mm -hmm. and one of the things, one of the chapters I just read was how, what is Jesus doing right now? What's he doing right now? And uh, he talks about how he has maintained, um, he's still fully human, still fully God. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father and he's interceding for us. Yes. And what's interesting is that as I've been practicing some grounding of my own and sensing like a greater sense of freedom in my own story, which is amazing. It's like, wow, so awesome. Yeah. I, I, think I'm, I think I'm processing this theology and working through it. Um, so, you know, it's happening on the podcast now, so here we go. <laughs> but but I, I mean, I know, I know that it's true that he's always interceding for us. And this is the part I'm processing. It seems like, like when I ground and I come back to presence and I'm able to shift to that different space and give myself a second, um, it, 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 as I was listening to the book, it was like, oh, what's really, what's happening maybe in the unseen world is that the intercession of Jesus is really beginning to have more time to affect me than when I'm kind of like running crazy it, on my own. And, I, and I'm not saying that like I manipulate how effective the intersection, intercession of Jesus is. So that's, that's not what I want to communicate. But what I want to communicate is that it seems like I, I experience something in that shift when I go from crazy to like quiet mm -hmm. and, and being reminded that, hey, don't forget that all the time Jesus is interceding on your behalf. And it just seems like when I give myself a second to be quiet, that intercession potentially just kind of um, takes root in a different way for me experiencing it than when I was running crazy. Any, any thoughts on, I'm still working that stuff out, but like, any thoughts on that? I think it, I think that's amazing. I think it might be a little different for everyone. Mm -hmm. I know for me, something that I think of when I've grounded into the present mm -hmm. and I begin to feel the peace of the Lord settle on me again, mm -hmm. and I'm able to move on. Mm -hmm. I made the choice because I had the power to, mm -hmm. to move on with my day. I can, I just, I imagine all of heaven mm -hmm. throwing up a shout of praise. That's awesome. You know, because um, beforehand I would have spiraled into some over busyness. I would have cleaned the entire house, right. but had no not made a time for prayer to ask right. God to help me. Right, right. You know, or I would have binged on, mm -hmm. you know, whatever was in the house. Mm -hmm. Probably everything that was in the house. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, um, raged out on mm -hmm. someone, namely my husband. Mm -hmm. And he has long suffered with me on this journey. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for him. Mm -hmm. And um, I know God gave me someone who, and he has equipped him mm -hmm. in those moments mm -hmm. with grace yeah. uh, to help me to see. Because... How amazing is it that, um, you know, if I'm in, the, if I've in times where I've been in the middle of an amygdala hijacking, mm -hmm. so, um, for example, there was a time where we were, you know, having a heated discussion. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> Good way to and put it. Daniel's hands were moving more mm -hmm. emphatically than mm -hmm. they usually do, and his voice was just a little louder. He mm -hmm. didn't yell. Mm -hmm. I didn't, mm -hmm. I'm not saying he yelled. Yeah. So, but I started to get amygdala hijacked, and I started to feel like I need to fight. Yeah. Um, I need to defend myself sure, sure. because I've been in domestic violence right. um, situations. Right. Um, so he saw me mm -hmm. and saw the switch flip mm -hmm. and he said, whoa, babe, you mm -hmm. need to stop and ground. Mm -hmm. You just got totally hijacked. Wow. You know, wow. instead of taking yeah. it personally. Right, right. And every, you know, there, there's just every time where something like that has happened, God has given him grace to see mm -hmm. um, and to, to say, the right thing, which mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, I just thank, thank Jesus for the, the opportunity to be able to experience this healing um, because it has improved every area of life and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, just continues to do so. And I want that. I want that for everybody. 
um, who has experienced trauma because it was never supposed to happen mm -hmm. to you and um, it wasn't your fault. I'm speaking to you now, mm -hmm. listener. Mm -hmm. It wasn't your fault and it wasn't supposed to happen to you and God hates it. But he also can give you a purpose for it and uh, bring you into a completely different way of living, thinking, and being. So um, with that, uh, I also just want to um, share that once you've gone through this book, you can have an incredible ministry mm -hmm. of taking other women through mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and seeing the light come on in their eyes. Okay. Um, and that's just uh, probably my favorite thing about this workbook, yeah. among the millions of favorite things. Yes, <laughs> yes. So take that as an invitation, uh, listener, that um, our God is, uh, through what uh, we discussed today, specifically through Amanda, uh, inviting you um, to further freedom and further healing in your journey. And um, also, I think, an invitation to those of you who live with people um, who are working this out through trauma uh, to just uh, ask for the grace of God uh, for yourself and for them as uh, you may journey through this together. And so, uh, man, just so many thanks, Amanda, for what you shared. And just this episode, I think, is really going to be uh, profound and used by the Spirit in a really special way. So, thanks wow. for being our guest. Thank you so much for having me. I want to tag in on what you just said Come on. because you reminded me of something. Go for it. So, also. Listen, um, this is our podcast. We, <laughs> we can go for two hours. You know? They don't have to listen. We can keep going. We won't do that to you guys. No. But I do want to say if anyone is in a relationship with someone who's a survivor of trauma and you want to understand, mm. maybe they're not willing to seek help. Maybe they're not willing to pick up this workbook. But you want to understand what's going on. This book will give you a lot of understanding for what's going on mm. for you to be able to love that person well and hopefully um, coax them into maybe picking mm -hmm. it up themselves. Mm -hmm. so. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So thank you again, Amanda, for not only sharing the sacredness of your story, but also the sacredness of the healing that God has brought through you. And we want to thank Marty Wibbles for her work in, in this and, um, and just being able to uh, use these tools. And special thanks to Paul Carley, who produced our show uh, today. And uh, we miss Frankie, our normal producer, is on a little vacay. Uh, we love him, we love you, and we love you listeners. Uh, thanks for